Hi, my name is Vakas Qureshi. Today I will be going over rotation atherectomy. This lecture series will be a series of many 5 to 10 minutes videos. They will be going over the details of rotation atherectomy, especially the practical steps. So first we need to understand the calcium. There are four things that we look in the calcium. These are all practical in nature. First, you need to define if the calcium is eccentric or is it concentric. The response to an atherectomy device is much better if there is more than 180 degrees of calcium. On the other hand, if it is more than 180 degrees of calcium, the stent expansion may not be adequate. So arc of the calcium, you need to look at that. The newer devices, especially the OCT, as well as some of the IVUS has now AI built into it where you can actually see a green or some colored marker that can actually mark the arc of the calcium. The second thing you need to look at the depth. Depth greater than 0.5 millimeter is less likely to expand. The superficial calcium is better However, there is a specific type of calcium called protruding or nodular calcium that is not great. If it is protruding like this, there could be um, covering overlying it, what we call as protruding calcium, or there could be something called eruptive nodule. The eruptive nodule does not have the endothelium overlying it or any fibrous cap. Rather, it has thrombus sometimes overlying it and it can cause NSTEMI and it is known to cause more risk of NSTEMIs down the line. Some of the locations are especially prone to this, especially um, right quarter of the artery ostium, the mid portion where there's a turn. This is another area. So you have to be very careful about these calcific nodules because they can erupt. On the left main side or LAD side, again, it could be osteal or it could be osteal LAD where the signs, the risk of perforation is much higher. So the problem with these nodules is number one, they don't get modified easily. The second problem with that is if you expand them too much, they can go outside the vessel and can cause perforation. So, Ideally, we currently do not have a particular way to deal with this. However, most people, including myself, we do rotational atherectomy through these, making a groove. Once a groove is made, an IVL catheter or the intravascular lithotripsy catheter can help it break it down and cause micro fractures, which can help in expansion of the balloon. However, you should not overly try to expand it especially if you do not have these other devices available or imaging catheter is not available. Whenever you see a protruding nodule, think about you need to do an imaging right after that. And the reason for imaging is you want to see the cracks in this, you want to see it break down, you want to see it expand. This protruding nodule can also recoil. A problem with recoil is that it can either break the stent or the stent can recoil and cause the stent to form something like this, like an oval shaped stent. Now, if you have a good MLA through that, or MSA, minimal stent area of, uh, you know, the formula five, six, seven, eight, where five is for cert, six for LED ostium, seven for distal left main and eight for the left main, if it is at least that, you may be fine. However, it does still increase the risk of stent thrombosis. Okay, so that was the depth and protruding nodule. Number three is the thickness. So there are studies which have looked at if the thickness is less than 0.67 millimeter, which means they are thin, the response to balloon angioplasty is great. But if it is a thicker slab of calcium, the chances of stent under expansion is about one fourth. So remember, all these criteria over here increases the chances of stent under expansion 
by 20, almost 25%. So 78% of one of the studies done where they use this 555 criteria had normal expansion, however, less than 78, which is 22% of the stents were not fully expanded. Once you put the stent, it's very difficult to go back and fix it. However, because of presence of intravascular lithotripsy, which is an off-label use, now people have been able to correct these, these mistakes later on. Nonetheless, you should always try to modify the calcium before proceeding forwards. Lastly, the length. The length more than 5 mm is unlikely to expand very well. Less than 5 mm it is more likely to expand. I should also include here, osteal calcium is much more difficult to expand because of presence of fibrous tissue. There is much more fibrous tissue at the osteum, which can cause recoil. So again, centricity, more than 180 degrees of arc, consider atherectomy. More than 5 millimeter length, consider atherectomy. More than 0.5 mm, mm thickness, consider atherectomy. More than 5 mm depth, consider atherectomy. So if you have two out of these, definitely consider atherectomy. Otherwise, you will have what we call as rota regret or atherectomy regret later on. Here are a few features, again, practical features, where you should stop before proceeding with the stent. Number one. If you see calcium, and a good practice is when you're deciding about putting a stent, you should take a cine where the first two beats should be without contrast. So you should be wait one, two beats, and then take a picture. Have a high definition picture, have a higher radiation and frame rates before deciding to move forward. Not many people do that. They just go ahead and go forward. However, even with that, 30% of the times, you will miss calcium that is not going to expand. 30% of the times. You are only going to get 70% of the times with the eyes. I, when I'm putting the wire through, and if I'm using a workhorse wire, like run through Xion Blue or Pro Water, and I'm having some resistance, that should trigger me to start thinking about that this, this, this vessel may need some atherectomy. After that, I try to put a balloon. If the balloon has difficulty to cross, this two out of these six points, I'm going to think about atherectomy quite like 90% chances that I'm going to atherectomy and do the atherectomy. If I can see the visible calcium, then definitely atherectomy. However, if you are not very pro atherectomy as I am, you can consider doing IBUS or OCT evaluation. If the catheter is not crossing, definitely atherectomy. So these are all the points that go kind of in descending order where you should start thinking about atherectomy. Now this just wiring difficulty and going for a thorectomy, of course, this is very liberal. But if the device is not crossing, you should start thinking about it. If or there was difficulty crossing uh, through that, if there's visible calcium, this is the point where I'm like, okay, I need to do a thorectomy. Most people decide about a thorectomy at this point where IVUS is not crossing. Okay. Now, if you see more than 180 degrees of arc on the calcium, on the IVUS catheter, you should definitely, definitely consider a thorectomy. This has been proven and seen in multiple studies, and there is clear evidence for using this criteria. And finally, if the balloon is not expanding, everyone should be thinking about a thorectomy. If you are not doing a thorectomy, there's definitely going to be a rota regret or a CSI regret or IVL regret later on. With this, thank you so much. Uh, my intention is to do these five to 10 minute long cases. And this is because of one of my fellows who mentioned that fellows do not have attention period more than five minutes. So I am planning to go over all these ablation 
techniques and balloon based techniques to deal with the calcium. Um, rotation atherectomy, orbital atherectomy, laser cutting balloon, scoring balloon, super high compliant balloons like open balloon and lithotripsy balloon. And there are newer lithotripsy balloons that are coming on the horizon. With this, uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Write them down in the comments. If you want to get more of this content, please subscribe. And, um, you know, there's a bell button next to it, which will tell you whenever there's a, there's these five-minute videos that I will be uploading. Again, thank you so much for your comments. I really appreciate you joining this channel. Thank you.